If you would, if you have a Bible, turn to Isaiah chapter 9, where you're going to read a passage of Scripture. It's a prophecy of the coming Messiah, the coming Jesus, and it is in the book of Isaiah. There's a line in that song that they just sung. It says, uh, he makes the nations prove, God makes the nations prove the light of his righteousness. And so this sermon, which will only be two or three hours tops, <laughs> is going to be about light, Jesus, the light of the world. So I'm going to invite you one more time, if you are able, to stand as we read the word of the Lord, a couple verses, Isaiah 9, verses 1 and 2, and 6 and 7. It's this, it's a prophecy of the coming Messiah. In the future, he, God, will honor Galilee of the nations. And I'll remind you that that is where Jesus is from. Galilee of the nations will be honored by way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And then this verse, it's on Christmas cards and it should be, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, the government will be upon his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Remain standing. Father, we praise you that you have come. 2,000 years ago, we praise you as Brett reminded us that you are coming again. And Lord, right now we recognize and we welcome that you are here. And Lord, we open our hearts and minds to receive you, your word, and your light for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people shouted on Christmas Eve, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Parents, if you would raise your hand, if ever, of any parent of any age, if you've ever in the dark tripped on anything, if you've ever tripped on a kid's toy, have you ever stepped on a, on, a, on a Lego or a kid's toy? If in the dark, raise your hands high. Kids, look at all these clumsy parents. Look at them all. We're not clumsy, though. It's dark. And in the dark, there's chaos of kids' toys and things. And the darkness needs light. There's a scripture in the book of um, Psalms that says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Jesus is this word. He is referred to as the word of God and he has come into this world to be the light, to be the lighthouse, to be the destination. He is like a flashlight in a dark world showing us which way to go. Imagine someone saying this. If you would look at John chapter 8 verse 12, a man named Jesus makes Oh, an outrageous claim. Listen to this. Jesus says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, he's declaring in front of people, I am the light of the world. Imagine someone saying that in the crowd. Wow, th this man is either who he says he is or he's not. He, he, he makes us decide. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And we believe this as a church on Christmas Eve. We believe Jesus is who he said he is. He is the light of the world. Have you ever been in pitch black darkness? Any fellow, uh, I'm a caver. Any fellow cavers out there? Any, I see a couple hands. Anybody gone caving ever? Okay, I, I see a couple hands. We like the term caver. We do not like the term Spelunker, that's a British term, so get that out of your mind. We're cavers. I, uh, I'm a caver. I, I, Manitou is kind of a destination for caving. There's the Cave of the Winds, but then there's all this cave network up by the Cave of the Winds in Williams Canyon, and I'm one of the guides. I'm part of a grotto, and, and we uh, take people caving. It's, it's one of the things I do for adventure and danger and to bring other people along with me. And along Fountain Creek, there are tons of caves. There's probably six or seven that I could think of right now in Manitou along Fountain Creek, one of the largest, it's actually the eighth largest granite cave in the world is just on the other side of the Manitou Springs incline. And you might be like, well, Joe, tell me where that is. I would love to go check that out. And I would say, no way. Like, there's no way I'm telling people where this is because you could go in there and you can get hurt. It is pitch black. It is utter darkness. You need to be prepared. I brought in a little show and tell item. Are you ready for this, kids? 
This is my caving helmet. It's, it's got, how many lights does it have on it? Can you see that? It's got two on it. One big one. I'll, I'll try not to shine it in your eyes. Uh, and then one smaller one here. And I wear this when I'm caving. Uh, this main one, the big light one, is, is for my main light. And if it goes bad for some reason, I break it, I bump into something, then I have this secondary one that goes for a very long time, hours and hours and hours, just in case. Why? Because a cave is pitch black. You can't see anything in a cave. And if you get in a cave and you are without a light source, you're in deep trouble. It's, uh, cave rescue is near impossible and very, very hopeless. And so whenever I'm caving, I bring people. There's always a time where we sit down, we take a little break, and we turn off the lights. And we just sit there in pitch black darkness. And I will say, wave your hand in front of your face. Can, can anybody see your hand? And it's pitch black. And some people will say, yeah, I think I can actually see it. And it's the mind playing tricks because it's pitch black. People are like, I think I see the shadows. Oh, really? No, you don't. It's pitch black. And then after, it usually takes about two or three minutes, people will say, hey, I think out of the corner of my eye, I think I see some. Is there other cavers in this cave? And I'll say, no, we're in pitch black. There's no one else here. It is pitch black. Your eyes are playing tricks on you. I forget what it's called when you see light out of the corner of your eyes when they're open and it's pitch black. The darkness is deceptive. It is scary. It is chaotic. To be in a cave without light is terrifying. And in this world, Jesus has come as the light of the world. There's a philosopher, I'm sure you've heard of the name, uh, kids get it confused with a toy, uh, but the Greek philosopher Plato lived uh, th- about 300 years before uh, Jesus ever came, and he wrote this allegory, allegory of the cave. Do you know this uh, piece of literature? It's in philosophy. I had to read it in a philosophy class. I had to read it in high school, and it's a wonderful, grisly scene. It's made up, but it says that there, imagine there's people chained inside of a cave, Once again, this is just a made-up story. Imagine people chained inside of a cave, looking forward. They can't turn their heads. All they see is a wall with shadows on it. Behind the people chained up is a light, and they only see shadows. Imagine this. Only seeing shadows, and all of their world, their explanations... Since the time they were young, they've been chained here. Everything they know is this wall of shadows. And then imagine, in this philosophy, um, in this allegory, someone from the outside comes to these prisoners and says, hey, there's another world. There's sunlight. There's green grass. There's colors. There's a blue sky. There's smells. There's things outside of this cave that are wonderful and awesome. And in this parable, in this allegory, the people chained there say, we don't want to hear anything of it. We don't believe you. All we know is this wall and this, these shadows, and we don't, th- we don't believe what you're saying is true. Think about that. What if Jesus is like this person who comes from on high? What if Jesus is who he said he was and is, that he is God from on high, come to this world to tell us the truth, to give us the light of life. A lot of times people come to services like this, Christmas and Easter, and people are searching. People are wondering, like, do I believe this? Are Christians um, closed-minded? I think we as Christians often get accused of being closed-minded or narrow-minded or judgmental. But I want you to think about it like this. Imagine if you had a heart problem and you went to a doctor and the doctor said, not really sure what's going on. We need some more tests. We need to do some x-rays. And you're like, okay. And you visit another doctor, and that doctor says something similar. Not really sure what's going on, but you need some MRIs. You visit another doctor. The other doctor says, I'm not really sure what's going on. Oh, you need some blood tests. You visit another doctor, same kind of thing. We're not really sure what's going on. Something is very wrong. You need a cardiogram. You visit one final doctor, and he says, I know exactly what is wrong. And I know how to treat this. And here's the medication. Here's the routine. What would you do? Well, you wouldn't say, that guy is so, that doctor's so closed-minded. He's so judgmental. He, you wouldn't say that. You would go home and you would say, I, I, either this doctor is saying what is true or he's not. Everyone else is not really sure. This guy seems really sure. 
Jesus seemed really sure of who he was. And so he either is who he said he was, the light of the world, or he's not. I have one last story to share with you. It's uh, my favorite Christmas story. It's my favorite sermon illustration ever. And it's not mine. It comes from uh, a guy named Paul Harvey. Do you know this guy from the radio? The rest of the story. You know that? Anybody? I used to listen to him in the 90s. Said that there was um, a cold, dark Christmas Eve. Very cold. And there um, was this family... The kids, the wife, they left for church for a Christmas Eve service into the night for a night service. And the man, the father, he stayed home and he just, he wasn't a Scrooge, but he was someone that just wasn't sure of this whole church thing, wasn't sure of this whole believing thing, just didn't, didn't want to participate. So he stayed home, made a fire, and it was record-breaking low temperatures. A cold front then moved in, making it even more cold, and then boom! Something was at the window, a thump on the window. So he goes over to the window. He looks out. There's no one there. But he looks on the ground and sees a poor little dead convulsing bird. And he's like, oh, this poor bird. He, he needs help. And he looks up in the tree, and there's a whole flock of birds freezing. They have not made it far enough south. They're in the wrong place at the wrong time, and they are all going to die. He looks on the ground, and he, his heart breaks. There's more little birds on the ground frozen. And he's like, I, I need to help. I need to do something. I need to gather these birds and I could bring them into the barn. The barn is big enough. So he runs out. He puts his clothes on, his boots on. He opens up the barn door and he starts trying to shoo the birds in. Like, come on, guys. Come on, get in there. But what he's doing, he's just scaring them. He's scaring them to death. They're losing their energy and flying around away from him rather than staying warm. And so he gets another. He goes inside. He gets some bread. He's trying to trick the birds. Like, follow me, guys. Throwing the bread into the barn. And go get it, guys. Go, come on, birds. Go, go, go. And the birds are afraid of the man. And then he gets this idea. He falls to his knees, kind of in desperation, thinking, I can't help these birds, these poor birds. He falls to his knees and wishes, like, oh, if only I could become a bird, then I could fly into this flock. I could show them. I could show them the way to the barn, to salvation. And as he's thinking these thoughts, on his knees, on the snow, he hears the church bells ringing, and then he gets it. I get what Christmas is. I understand now. This is God, light of the world, come into humanity to show us, to be salvation for us. I want to invite you to stand with me. I want to pray. We are going to do something that we do at Christmas Eve. We light candles, a symbol of the light of the world. But if you would, would you pray with me? Would you bow your head? God, we thank you that, that you have come into this world. Light of the world, you, God, became one of us, made your dwelling among us, and the angels testify, and the virgin gives birth, and Lord, you are with us. People walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born. To us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of peace. If you would take your candles out, I want to um, share this light, share the light of Jesus that this symbolizes with all of you. We're going to begin lighting these candles and the light will go back into the darkness of this room. And I want you to receive it literally like, and pass it on literally, but I want you to think about something. We're going to sing some songs. Think about receiving the light and asking yourself, just you and before the Lord, asking yourself, have you received Jesus into your heart? Is he the light of your life? And if he is, you'll receive it and you'll pass it on. Have you shared the light of Jesus in your life? Jesus says he is the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness. Sometimes the darkness does not understand it. 
but to all those who accept it, he gives the right to become children of God. Let's worship as we light these candles. Jesus, we declare you are the light of the world. Would you join me lifting your candles on high? A declaration that, oh, dark world was visited by God himself. Jesus, the light of the world, came to us to seek and to save those that were walking in great darkness. And so, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we worship you. We give you all praise and honor this Christmas Eve, thanking you that you did not become God. You've always been God, but you became man, and you made your dwelling among us. So we praise and thank you, Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. As we are dismissed here, there's going to be leaders up here ready to pray with you hope, pray with you healing, pray with you provision. Come forward. I see a lot of guests. There's a welcome table in the back. You could drop your candle off in the back. And as you go, let us greet each other this ancient Christmas greeting. I'll say, Christ is born, and you'll say, glorify him. Christ is born. Christ is born. Christ is born. Go in peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.